Play Project is about giving children time and space to play. It's a, a very small size, as you can see, but the children with us over the years have decided how they want it. The philosophy of the school really started when I read a book by an American guy and it was, all, it was called The Hurried Child. The children were not having enough white space, i.e. they were never left to their own devices, they were, their activities were highly structured. And I was thinking, actually, what's the quality that's going on here? Um, what can we do about it? In the Teacher TV project, I realised it was best done by the children. Millie and Marcus came up with very good reasons why they would like to do their pieces. I wasn't present in the, the room during the, the working with the, the children because I knew that I would influence how, how things happened. If children are working outside of the, the authority of the, the, the teacher, how can they be trusted to do something that might resemble work? I think most children like it. Part of the play project is not knowing what's, what's going on, and this was a chance to get a few of those answers. Hello, I'm Millie. My job in this film is the director. I, to get in this film, I went on an interview to be the director and told my teacher what I wanted to do with this film, and I got the job. What I wanted to do in this film is to have a clear film that everybody could understand and enjoy at the same time. What do you think Play Project is? I think Play Project mainly is a way of getting to know people who you don't really know and it's a really fun way to um, connect with people and it's a really good way of learning how they um, learn and how they imagine. Our cameraman is Marcus. He came on an interview with me to be the cameraman and he's very happy behind the camera. To make Play Project, two people are chosen to pair the groups and make a brief. Lubin, which is the classroom, Arthur, Seymour, Sammy and Charlie. This can be a hard process because everybody has to be happy. A group that you know might not be able to work together and then you feel bad but it's a challenge and it's fun trying to get it together and trying to make a play that will be enjoyable for other people. They also have to choose where the groups are going. You get to go outside when it's warm and you get to use different parts of the school and you get to evolve your place around the things. They also have to choose a coloured bin that the group can use. In the bin there are costumes and props that the groups can use in their play. When you're just in your school clothes, you feel like a school kid, because you are. But when you dress up, you feel more of that character, and the props help you with the play. At last, we think of a brief that we think would be good for the play project. Last week's brief that you were in a job and something goes wrong, and your boss is very cross with you. What do you do? When lunch is over, the two people show the class the groups they will be in, the areas they will be working in, the colour bins they have and the brief. You stick to their brief, which this week is you're in the middle of a field and there's something outside and what happens next. And... Hang on from what Millie said. When you sit down, if you do sit down and you talk about your ideas, somebody says, oh, I'd like to be this, and the other person says that, and then you think, Oh, well, how are we going to link those two? And then I think that's when people start to give up. They think, oh, we'll never make a play out of all these characters because they're so different. And if you try and link them together, then it's quite good. And that's what I liked about this play because, um, the brief, I mean, because there's two sets and there's lots of different characters that you can be and still make a play. Then it's all up to the groups to produce a play, sort out any arguments, practice it a couple of times and then make the decision of showing it to the class. 
Yeah, and, and it could be like, like, but what, what should the actual, the actual play do? It I could we should be. I know what, it can be like a spy mission, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Evil, I'll draw a picture of him. Uh, I, evil muscle. So, wait, wait, so, so, Sammy, who do you want to be? I want to be one of the five, and we are trying to stop the And Charlie, Charlie what do you want to be? Charlie, what do you want to be? You need the brownie, brownie, brownie. No, no, you go away, because we scare you, and then you think about the mistakes. You run away. You get to show everyone what you've done through the course of that that period of time, saying as you've got the same brief, you've managed to make up different plays. And it's really fun showing everyone because you know, it's not nervous because you know that everyone else is going to show theirs. In the 80s, oh, it's grand. Stop talking about your damn 80s woman! How <laughs> much do the tent? I'll just get it in there. I need some sleep. We're going to go cow watching tomorrow. <laughs> They're bird watching. And oh, oh, my God! I love the country. If my groups had an argument or something, I mean, in the end, and Mr. Wishart's seen that on Miss Sokana, and and we get something really good together. In the end, I quite like to show the teachers of what we um, can achieve, even even when we're arguing. Yeah. <laughs> to be prepared to show the whole of their play and take the feedback seriously from the rest of their classmates. Um, yeah. Riley and um, Millie got massive parts in like speaking but Rosie and Lily didn't like speak once. Lily spoke. Yeah. And um, Sam, Miles, Alex well, spoke in a different language. We couldn't, we couldn't really speak we like Sam wanted to be, be our table to be a tent, like instead yeah. of a tent, so a table. I think there's something outside the table. So that. And then, <laughs> and then I, ha Bryony had the idea of a big, huge family coming. No, we kind of split up. No, well, we did in a way. Well, we split we up did. into groups. Me, Miles, and Alex would work on. Oh, oh, and they would put work on their lines. And then so we sort of came together. So when they came together, it was good. It was funny. They're obviously passionate and really thought a great deal about what they were doing. Was there anything surprising in the responses of those children to each other in that video? That's what they normally do. That's what they're able to produce week in, week out. They're able to marshal themselves, organise themselves, manage the conflicts and the tensions. I think, Andrew, you've brought that to the project, though, haven't you? The, um, the idea of, you know, whatever group you're in, you're going to mm. make it work. It was funny in the video where you got Sam, there's almost a sort of uh, brazen determination to show the teachers that even when things, if your teachers walk past and seen you're having an argument, they're to show off that you mm. can really produce something good, yes. you know, just despite, despite that, yeah. And, yeah. and that yeah. we don't need to have our mm. squabbles sorted out by, by an adult. Right. In the end, I quite like to show the teachers of what we um, can achieve and even when we're arguing. How yeah. different do you think it would be if you had made the video rather than the children? Um, it would have been different on a couple of levels. I think the, the first um, area of difference would be that the children, as soon as I'm in the room, will behave dif differently. And so what you were seeing with Marcus and Millie filming was the, the children with an, an uninterrupted by adult gaze and whatever effects that has on their behaviour. Yeah, and, and it so could be like, but what, what should the actual, the actual play do? It I could be, should be, I know what, it can be like a spy mission against the They've made a film which is about their perceptions of the play project, their understanding of it in the process, whereas if I was making it, I'd have been looking for points that I thought were interesting for teachers to discuss um, mm -hmm. as learning points and, and issues of concern for teachers looking at this type of work. I think it's about pulling out the deep learning that is going on, and it's also about trying to communicate to people who rightly want to know what is going on in the classrooms, people who are funding that, parents who are concerned about the quality of education their children are getting. But it's turning around and saying to them, 
the numbers game, the stats game, is not the only measure of your child. And that's the big are. issue for us, isn't it? Yes. We, we have sort of racked our brains as to how we can qualitatively present mm. what we do as a school rather yes. than quantitatively. So what about using video as a means of documentation? By using documentation or in a written form or in a video form or photographic form, mm. what you're actually doing is making yourself a better listener. Stop! In terms of observing children, what is the value of that? Just like we watched a video now about what is that actually telling us about the deeper learning. Mm. It's looking to find what really stimulates the children to want to learn and not only what, what they want to learn, but it's how they want to learn, with whom they want to learn. I think there's a lot of scope for leaving cameras in the room just running by themselves mm. um, so that at the end of the feedback session when you become aware that a number of children have very different perceptions about what's gone wrong mm. to enable some kind of agreement about what, what has happened there and then for, for learning to come from that. I mean, if, yeah. in, in my mind, I, I would like to see them moving towards having a, a, a small group that worked in the area where a teacher might traditionally work, which is thinking above this outside of the sessions of the play project and thinking mm. what, what are the strengths of what we're doing what are the areas we could build in and, and would actually sort of present areas of direction to the class the personalized learning agenda is the you know big buzzword at the moment yeah, exactly. now in a traditional setup you can't do that this type of approach where the children take responsibility for their own learning and technical decisions mm. frees us up to make them to use our professional skills again it comes back to the the same same questions for which I just throw back to the children. You know, how how can we make this better? And mm -hmm. you think they say, well, what do you mean by better? And I say, well, <laughs> how how can we make it so that we feel more intense about this? How yeah. can mm -hmm. we get it that everybody is more committed, more passionate about it? That we're getting more pride in what we're what we're, mm -hmm. what we're coming out with. And mm -hmm. I think I think it's the children find that as a realistic objective. Absolutely, and that we could talk about this a lot longer. I think we certainly but could. Just getting it's a going. very very interesting <laughs> discussion. And I'd just like to say thank you very much all of you, Andrew, mm. Anne and Darren. Mm. And big thank you and good luck with whatever comes next. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. If you keep the camera roughly at the eye level of the person you're going to be filming. Huh. Well, like this, you have it at your eye level and then when he bends down you can move the camera so you've still got it at eye level and you can move the LCD. This would have been handy when I was actually filming with one of these. Yeah. <laughs> The children were, were asked by a governor a couple of years ago, what, what would you hate to happen in your school? And the two things they said were, we don't wouldn't want any of our teachers to leave, which was great because I think they said it to an Ofsted inspector. And then the second thing they said was the play project. You could never ever take the play project away from us, could you?